We're going to start with the Pledge of Allegiance. As an order of business, uh, I just have to announce tonight, in case anyone from the audience is waiting for these projects, the Eagle Road land development project has been pulled from the agenda tonight, as has the Chick-fil-A Zoning Hearing Board uh, application. And I'm going to move the Historic Preservation Ordinance introduction to a special meeting of the Planning Commission that we can all figure out, uh, maybe Trish, you could uh, send out something and say, folks, or these three dates, any of them work for us. I just think it would be cleaner this way because none, none of us have an ele electronic version of the ordinance, and I feel like uh, it's just cleaner to tackle that kind of subject, I think, by itself, if that's okay. So that said, uh, did anyone have any issues with the minute, minutes from the uh, September meeting? Yes, so just a couple of corrections here on item 3A, ordinance 2022-10. Um, with respect to the vote, Mr. Chairman, uh, I was the sole dissenting vote. So I vo it doesn't change the results, but I was a nay on that. And um, just on item six, uh, my last name's misspelled. It won't be the last time. It's F-R-U-M-I-N for the record. Thank Sorry you. about that. No worries. Okay. So first up is uh, 200 South Ithan. Um, we've it's been a while. It's been a little while, right? Since it's been a while, yeah, yeah. Um, and so yeah, just refresh us, Nick, because I think uh, I think most of the uh, board liked the development plan. As I think we gave you preliminary. Right. Um, and I think it was a sidewalk issue was. Correct. Was the only outstanding thing. Right. Yeah, and that's still, and, and Steve can probably expand on the sidewalk issue, uh, where we stand with that. Yes, Mr. Chairman. So the, uh, just real quick background, the conditional use requirement, the adjudication was the, the developer was to install a sidewalk on the east side of South Ethan. The township was going to assist if there were any easements required. Uh, we were not able to obtain all the requisite easements to put the sidewalk in. So it also further stated if the sidewalk, uh, if we could not obtain those easements, the developer would be required to put in escrow uh, money for the design and construction of that project. And that would go into escrow and could only be used for that. So at this point, uh, we did meet with the developer and we are working uh, with him to finalize numbers for what they would ha he, they would have to put into escrow, assuming that this will not be able to be built. So uh, in other words, it's not an issue for this commission to have to deal with. Great, thank you, Steve. So Nick, yeah, what do you, you want? Steve, is there a term for that escrow, like a, a term limit? Not that I'm aware of. So once it goes in, it will stay in that account until at you some know, point a the sunset, project is done. Sunset clause or something? Mike, is that what you're thinking? Exactly. No sunset on that? No, sir. Okay. And my understanding is it could be used for sidewalks in this area, even if it's not those specific sidewalks. No, it would be those specific. It's going to have to be you know, basically the frontage across from 200 South I think. Okay. Um, the review letters are pretty basic. Um, we agree with all the comments. A couple of the waivers requested were requested in the um, preliminary plan. It was already approved in the preliminary plan. Um, everything else is okay with the applicant um, and um, will comply. And uh, for example, one of them was we know that we have to pay the fee in lieu the recreational fee. Uh, we still have to, the township has to advise us as to the pole street lights, what's required, if any more are required. And we agree with number five on Roger's letter that regarding the water system. And uh, 
and then the inlets and everything else in the letter basically is just um, drafting items that will be included. And Damon mentions general comments to revise truck turning templates for emergency vehicles. Everything else is acceptable. And um, as you know, this was a two, four, six, eight, nine uh, lot uh, density modification continuation of the old Trianon plan. Um, and the initial hold up for final plan approval were the sewer modules. Um, now we believe we're on the connection management plan with DCJA and hopefully they should be approved um, um, soon uh, as well. October 19th, there you go. So um, we're, we're moving forward hoping to have uh, final land development and I am um, pretty certain the neighbors are all in favor of this. They were in favor before. It was a unanimous vote from the homeowners uh, to approve this plan. Thank you, Nick. <clears throat> Any other, any commissioners have any further comment on this? Uh, they're seeking final. Is there any public comment? In that case, I'll make a motion to grant final approval for the 200 South Ithan. All in favor? Aye. All right, thanks, Nick. Thank you. Next up is uh, 132 East Lancaster Avenue sketch plan. Um, Rob, this is information only for us, right? It, in other words, you're giving us a sketch plan. You're looking for some, uh, our, our reaction to it, right? No vote, right? Correct. I think Rob and Todd Polig are going to pretty much handle this one. We'll try. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to sit down. <laughs> I'm good. I am um, representing the developer. So okay. That's Thank you, Nick. Are you? Calvary is on the way. I didn't like that one. Good evening. My name is Todd Polig. Um, I'm a owner, to agent for the property, and I'm working with Martin Marshall of Waynestone Group. He's the owner of the property. Uh, with me tonight is, is Nick Ganilia uh, and Rob Lambert of Site Engineering uh, to help any answer any questions you may have. Uh, the property is located at 132 East Lancaster Avenue. Uh, currently, it's the vacant gap building. It's on the south side of Lancaster Avenue. I don't, you can't see my fingers. Okay, south side of Lancaster Avenue. Um, it's between Wayne Avenue and Luella Avenue. It's right across from the Wayne Hotel. It's between the old three-story brick bell building and California closets. The building takes up the property width of about 75 feet, and it shares a party wall adjacent to California closets to the west. The building is approximately 140 foot deep and shares a party wall about 14 foot long with a condominium at the 102 Luella. Uh, the property continues further back uh, to School Lane. The proposed project entails remodeling the existing a little over 10,000 square foot one-story gap building uh, to include just under 8,000 square foot of retail space. Uh, go to page two here. So on the right-hand side, you'll see the retail. 
Um, the site falls off several feet from Lancaster Avenue back to School Lane, so parking for the apartments will be under the building and access will be from School Lane. So if you look on the left-hand side, at the bottom of the page is School Lane. Uh, that's uh, a story uh, lower than uh, the front of the building on the right-hand side. The pink building is the retail and that's flush or that's uh, set with the uh, pavement uh, on Lancaster Avenue. Um, what we intend to do here is uh, an addition of two new residential floors with 15 apartments in total over the retail. So on the left hand side, you'll see there's a second floor or the first floor of, re of uh, residential has seven apartments and a amenity space. That amenity space will probably wind up being a little fitness center in a sitting area. On the right hand side is the third floor or the second retail level and that uh, shows uh, the eight apartments. So total of 15 apartments. On the top, you can see the pink area, that's the retail. On the left hand side, you'll see it's uh, even with uh, Lancaster Avenue. And on the right hand side of that, you can see underneath the pink area is where we're gonna enter from School Lane for the parking. And then the two levels above uh, are the two new levels. So the architecture proposed is a traditional brick building with limestone along the retail frontage. Bernard and Associates from Westchester will be the project architect. We're taking the language from the three-story bell building next door, and as well as some other brick buildings on this block if you go over towards uh, Wayne Avenue. So, so the whole redevelopment approach for this project was purposely taken from Ragnar's comprehensive plan. So we went to the comprehensive plan first to take a look at this. Um, the, under section three of the comp plan under housing, it encourages mixed use. Uh, the goals include transit oriented development, which will harmonize and enhance the existing community. The objectives uh, to allow for increased density surrounding commercial areas, particularly near the transit centers and develop regulations to support housing above and among commercial uses in the Wayne area and other appropriate locations. Section four of the comp plan under the business and economic development, uh, the goals include protect and enhance the character and mix of uses in Wayne as a special town center. Uh, the objectives include assure that upper floor spaces in the Wayne business district are reserved for residential use. And I, I got a nice quote out of there. It says the walkable nature of the core of the Wayne Business District is a major component of its success. The mix of apartments above stores and their proximity to the train station adds to the pedestrian and mixed use environment that lends vibrancy to downtown Wayne. A way to further promote this residential commercial mix would be to assure that the upper floor spaces in the Wayne Business District are reserved for residential use. One other note under section five of that plan under transportation and circulation, it talks about the township proactively promoting and facilitating the use of access measures between adjacent but separately owned parcels. So if you look at, uh, I think it's probably on the left hand side here, the building uh, in currently touches the condominiums, which are on the bottom right of that, uh, of that left-hand side. So we purposely are pulling back about 15 foot from that building and allowing an uh, access way uh, through there. So basically, um, so um, what that would entail, uh, and I talked to the, uh, the builder who built that condominium, there's a block wall along the side of that building right now. It's a blank wall, but it's blocked. So we should be able to carefully take that building off and then replaster that so that uh, put that back and then we'll wind up with a little access way. Um, that otherwise everything uh, in the back there is uh, sort of shut off. Um, uh, 
In terms of the Wayne Business District Overlay Zone, it's our intent to comply with all the applicable provisions. I note in the Gannett Fleming letter uh, dated September 21st, we understand we need so, uh, to secure um, sewer capacity. We are included on that uh, request list that's in the, the, joint, the Delaware County Joint Authority. Under zoning, um, we understand that the retail uses are limited per the ordinance. Uh, the front of the building offsets will meet the requirements. It's a sketch plan, so it's hard to discern It's hard to discern the uh, offsets on the front, but we will meet, we will meet those. Um, and the intent is to maintain the existing street parking for the retail use. Actually, this retail use is approximately 20% than the retail uh, in the gap building today. Under the subdivision and land development, site engineering, Rob, will be surveying the property. We'll get the right uh, acreage um, and the existing building features and parking dimensions will all be squared away. The Gilmore and Associates letter of September 26, uh, the subdivision and land development comments um, will add the planned site features, natural features information, truck turning templates, and we're good with adding a lighted sidewalk along School Lane. So if you see on the bottom left here, um, the condominium has a sidewalk that goes across and we will continue that uh, sidewalk across School Lane. However, I, I will note that we've got the entrance of, to the parking under the building, so that's a, a, an apron. And we also have uh, a cutout for a drop-off for uh, loading as well. So although there'll be a sidewalk along there, um, I can imagine right now that we'll continue, maybe it'll be a brick inlay across the driveway itself. So. It'll be flush for cars to go over, but we'll make an attempt to continue the uh, driveway, uh, the sidewalk along there. Um, and we'll square away the sides of the parking spaces under, the, under there. And I am confirming that the amenity space is intended for residents only. Like I said before, it's likely a fitness center and a seating area there. Um, and we think it's a good idea, as, as was recommended, to employ signage to prohibit non-residents from using the garage. So I'm happy to answer any questions. Mr. Polig, um, with respect to the retail, how many square feet are you contemplating? Just under 8,000 square foot. Okay, got it. Um, have you considered what the loading uh, requirements might be? In, in other words, uh, is there another loading dock space no, we're going to provide, uh, if it's under 8,000 square foot, we just need one loading area. And so we're providing that space, which is, uh, I think it's 12 by, it's on the plan. 12 by 30. 12 by 30. Okay, got it. Um, just out of curiosity, uh, where in your plan is the parking for the retail contemplated? We're just going to, uh, right now there's a retail use. And so there's no additional retail parking, just what's just in front of the building along the street. Okay. So, and um, I, I'm just confirming. I didn't see any removal of any uh, public parking spaces there. There is none. No, uh, okay. that's correct. Gotcha. Keep that intact. Um, one more question, um, with respect to the WBOD. Um, there is another requirement for multifamily, which is um, Article 5, 255-29A20. Uh, um, and this refers to overflow parking um, for, uh, I think they stipulate uh, one, one additional parking spot for every four residences. Um, have you looked at that as well? I did not look at that, so I'll take that into consideration. I didn't, uh, I didn't pick that up. Yeah, I, I don't know if it's applicable. It's a, it seems like it is. Is it? It's in this in the zoning here. I'll yes, take, it is. I'll take a look at that. Yeah, if you if you can reference uh, 255-80 parking standards, uh, 
Section E, uh, it says parking shall also comply with Article 5. I think it's in the land development ordinance, yeah. Right. Not the zoning, it's in the land development. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah there, there's a requirement, I think, for excess spaces when you have over so many units. Right. I'll take a look at that. Great. Thank you. Do you uh, contemplate um, in encouraging any of the existing retail to come back or? Right now it's a, excuse me, right now it's a vacant, the vacant gap building. I'm thinking of the other bill, I'm sorry, my mistake. Okay. And the, the no, we don't know, we don't, we do not have a tenant in mind at this point. A single tenant or multi-tenant? Again, right now we're setting it up for a single tenant, but we have enough frontage to have uh, multiple doors if we need to go to multiple tenants. Part of the charm of walk two is walk two a lot of variety, so I hope that that works out. Great. With the 15 units, are they, what's the, uh, what's the mix gonna be? Yeah, of the 15 units, uh, 10 are one bedroom and five are two bedroom units. And they're mixed by floor. Mr. Polig, uh, just one more question on the unit mix, uh, the one bedrooms. Uh, any idea on square footage? Yeah, they need to be under 800 square foot. So it's probably just under 800 square foot. Okay, very good. Thank you. And then regarding the parking, how many parking spots will you have underneath? Yeah, perfect. Per co, with the exception of the additional parking, we're showing on the plan uh, two spaces for the two bedrooms and uh, one space for the one bedrooms per the code. Plus the loading dock in addition. To Plus that. the loading dock, correct. Would there, would there be any uh, exterior parking uh, in this design? There's none proposed. Okay. Because you're going to use the alley? J yeah, just the existing street. It's in uh, parking in front on, ex on Lancaster Avenue, existing. Nick, <clears throat> just a, sort of a question for you. Uh, we have an applicant here uh, behind you guys who's going to have, it's a zoning hearing board. Right. Uh, so there, there's some hardship in this project, right? I mean, you're going to need CHP relief? We may. It depends on how we approach it. Is There's that, a possibility. Is it could be, depending on the parking, if we're demolishing, the um, solicitor's office had told us if you're demolishing, you're starting from scratch. Um, if we're adding an addition, which is also a possibility here, we may not have to start from scratch with the parking requirement. The proposal is to have sufficient parking for the apartments. Of course, they're going to have to plan for that additional parking, too, for the overflow um, as well. Uh, but that's what the intent is, at least. Um, but th there could be ZHB relief, so you're going to see it again. If we do have to go to the zoning hearing, you'll see it again, yeah, in addition I, to any it, land development. Yeah, I was just wondering about, like, in the WBOD, like, in general, like, the, the public parking, I don't want to say free-for-all, that's too strong, but it's like you just get your spots where you can find your spots, right? Right. But is that an issue, like, in the WBOD? I, no. Um, it actually, the, the way it's been interpreted is that if you have no off-street parking, you don't have to provide any off-street parking. So in other words, that if you have no off-street parking, it's just the public parking that's available. Um, and um, basically, there is no parking requirement. Now, in this case, we are supplying uh, parking underneath the building, rightfully so, because of apartment use. And of course, apartment users are going to want to have their, their parking space um, as will the next applicant, too. It, 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 similar proposal as far as parking. Right. Um, so the, uh, in terms of the, are there, uh, is there, how much traffic is coming out of this building now? None, right? Well, none now because there's no so, retail. So yeah. did you, you guys are going to have to, like, think about that, too, right? Right. Because right. you could have, each apartment will have one, one space? Now, that depends on the size of the apartments. The smaller ones have one space and the larger ones have two spaces. Because 20, okay, so 20 cars and you're coming out on school lane, right? Right. 
Yeah, we'll have to have, uh, I'm sure we'll have to have a traffic report done. We're at very preliminary stage, as you can see right now. No, 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 I totally appreciate that. Yeah, yeah the, the game plan right now is to remodel the gap building and then add the floors, the, re the residential on top. That's the game plan. Mr. Cornelia, can you run uh, the parking calculation back in terms of uh, the retail usage? So I calculated just by code. Um, if it's 8,000 times 0.8 divided by 200. And okay. plus, I think that's all though in WBOD. There is no requirement for employee parking like there is in the other provisions, but let me just double check. Um, so restaurant is, is the only employee parking, but um, be it as it may, uh, you're not currently providing off-street parking for the retail use, correct? That's correct. As existing. And your theory is that because you're not currently providing it now, you're, uh, you don't have to provide it. Correct. It's existing nonconformity, and the only parking we would have to provide would be for the new use, the apartment use. Okay. Does that change if you scrape the site? According to the solicitor's office, it does. Got it. Thank you. I don't necessarily agree with that interpretation, but that's how they interpret it. So they're interpreting that way, so we'll have to go to the zoning hearing if that's the way it's interpreted. We get it. Thank yeah. you. Uh, this would be the time for any public comment. Anyone? Pepe? My name is Jose Garcia. I live at 102 Luella. And uh, I happen to have gone to a meeting on Friday for the 105 Luella uh, project, which actually eliminates eight parking spaces, so uh, public spaces. So now you have another large area. I realized the ga gap was there before, but now you have, in addition to the 10,000 square feet that are gonna be on the 105 Luella plus this development and eight spaces less. So I'm not sure how the town is gonna to be managing all these parking spaces. I'm also a resident of 102. Thank you, <laughs> first time. All right, I'm also a resident of 102. My name is Dee Erheim, and I do live on that corner, which is the, the far left corner, where um, I guess the garages are going to be. Now, my, my question is uh, several. Um, Mr. Pollock mentioned, mentioned remodeling the gap building. Now, is he remodeling it, or is he tearing it down and starting over? Yeah. Try it. Oh, come on, yeah, sure. Come on, sure. Todd. Sure. Okay. Uh, the game plan is to remodel. Now, if you look along the building, and you know, if you look along the side of the building between the Bell Building and the Gap Building right mm -hmm. now, uh, the first floor, there's a grade level coming down with stone, and there's a first floor of brick, solid brick wall. We'll probably put window openings in that brick wall along the, for the commercial. It's not a have to, but it seems uh, reasonable to potentially put some windows uh, in the side of the retail. So you can see on the right-hand side, uh, behind the stairwell from the back, we're showing two windows. They would have to be built into the existing brick wall that's there now. It's a solid brick wall that comes all the way down there now. Uh, yes. However, uh, on, the, on the bottom level, I wasn't quite sure if you were going to put the garages underneath. That means digging down. Digging down how deep? Yes, it looks like a couple of two feet or so two from feet. school lane that will go down and then underneath the building. All right. And um, in view of the fact that there are... If you look at the top, you can see on the right-hand side, school lane, you can see it's... Whoop, How'd I do that? <laughs> Magic. Be here for a while. Okay. So now we have uh, 
school lane, which I think at uh, one point I understood the traffic to be close to 1,000 cars a day. Now, I might be wrong, but I think at one point, since I've lived there 11 years, at one point I was, we were trying to get school lane either to be one way or to have some, some kind of uh, amelioration for the amount of cars that go through school lane. So a thousand, I understand at that point it was a thousand, about a thousand cars a day. Now, I, we have trouble in our little building here with nine garages facing school lane of coming out of our garage. Some of us back out, some of us back in so that we can come out forward. However, uh, it is dangerous and uh, cars are not accustomed to paying attention that school lane is no longer a big cut through street. It's a street where people live and children walk and everyone walks there, dogs and everybody. So with additional cars for Mr. Pollock's um, uh, redo, it's going to make more traffic. I mean, and it's going to be, to me, more dangerous. Um, in, let's see now. In addition, um, we, uh, is there going to be any other access to the, to the garages except on School Lane? Yeah, the access uh, for a vehicle will be just from School Lane. Whoop. Uh, you can see it on the left-hand side. There is a door uh, um, that also goes out to that little uh, cutout area, but that's it in terms yeah. of access over, no, over here. Oh, okay. Yep. So uh, that, will, that, that little cutout, mm -hmm. which you're pointing to, would be right next to my condo. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And what access, what, what, would that, what goes there? Who just, goes there? Uh, there's a trash. We have a basically interior in the building behind the stairwell towards mm -hmm. School Lane. There's a, a, a area there that will collect trash. When a tr trash truck comes, we'll be able to open the door, load it right in, so we don't have any trash being stored outside. That's nice. Okay, and they, they will back in. Of yes. Course. Yes. Okay. All right. And um, let me just take a couple more minutes here while I make make my notes here. Um, Let's see now. Will there also be? That's okay. It's okay. I'm so sorry. Will there also be that sort of area, which I'm going to call an apron? Will that apron consist still be there, or will the building come out further onto School Lane? No, the the that's the depth of the building that's there right now. Yes. So there won't be any further extension towards Full Lane, School, school lane. lane from the existing building. Okay. Because there is sort of what I call an, an apron, apron there. Apron. Yep. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. All right. Yeah, it's, um, it's paved right now. Pardon? It's uh, asphalt paving right now. To some extent. Yes, <laughs> supposedly. <laughs> supposedly. It's rut oriented. <laughs> okay, I think that's it, and thank you. Thank you for your comments. <laughs> thank you. Uh, one thing in Damon's comments, too, which I believe we will be able to um, um, provide is a sidewalk along School Lane to extend the existing sidewalk that comes from um, the existing condos there. Uh, in view of the fact can, that... Can you just speak, make sure you're speaking into the mic so people at home can hear? I'm sorry, That's certainly. Okay. I can hear you fine, but... Well, okay, I can project my voice, different. but nevertheless. Um, my po now I forgot my point. <laughs> Just a second. Uh, I'm old, you know. Um, okay, I'm, I had a... Well, I guess it wasn't that important a point, but... <laughs> I'm embarrassed to do so. Okay. Right. Is there any other public comment? Uh, How you doing? Good. Thanks for having us. Um, question, uh, it's kind of a broader context question because there's a lot of redevelopment. Oh, hi, I'm Tom Shaw. I live on Lenore Avenue, so live very close proximity to here. Um, I, I see a lot of articles and, and things um, like these developments being proposed on, the, I guess, the eastbound side of Lancaster Avenue. And my question is, um, you know, in light of this and other proposals and the Super Wawa and Chick-fil-A, is there a master plan for this town 
that takes into account proposals like this that will ultimately fold under a master umbrella for what Wayne wants to be and should be and studies the traffic impacts of what will happen as we put more cars onto a two lane in each direction street? Yes. <laughs> there is, it's, it's, it has some years on it. Um, Skip, you probably, uh, no, but I mean, it, I would say the last master plan in Radnor had to be 90s, right? Or 80s? The eight, did you say the 80s? 90s, 90s. The 90s, okay, so 30 years ago? Older. 2003. So that's what, 19 years ago? Yeah, that's Okay, that's, that's great. That's, um, I, t I spoke to one of our, our commissioners, and they said that uh, Wayne is considering doing a new master plan very soon, I believe in the next 18 no, months. We've been considering it for about five or 10 years. What's that? It's, a, it's such a project that uh, we talk about it, but we don't seem to start it. Okay, well, I would, if I could make a suggestion as a resident, uh, it would seem like we really need to understand the um, impact on cars and increased volume as we look at all these developments along the same section of eastbound Lancaster Avenue. There Thank you. A, there is a newer ordinance uh, or overlay district called the Wayne Business Overlay District that has modified the existing zoning and uses, and that was a few years ago now. That's probably about 15 years old almost itself. Wow. Well, I, I, would, I definitely would note a lot of uh, expanded development of Lancaster Ave, high rises, more people, more cars. So it'd be very nice if we could get a handle on the impact of all of these developments in total, not just one offs, you know, meetings, things being pushed to different agendas, and consider the whole development of a one mile stretch of East Lancaster Avenue. Thank you. Point well taken. Thank you. You sure may. I was going to ask, are, are there any ordinances for noise and dirt and debris in the township? Because as I understand it, not only is this particular project being, being presented, but also there is one on the corner of Luella and uh, Lancaster. Um, anytime there's any kind of construction, there's vibration and dirt. Uh, there's the, we need to know what the ability to take the, take the uh, refuse away as, as well as bring in new products for the, for the building. So I was wondering if there's any ordinance on noise, dirt, uh, and uh, removal. Okay, anybody Steve, know? Yes, Mr. Chairman, so uh, we do have an ordinance on hours of work. It's not specifically a noise ordinance, but it is on hours of work. And we don't have a, we do have ordinances that uh, if a builder wishes to do any type of earthwork, right, there's requirements through the engineering department in the state of Pennsylvania uh, that they have to address dust mud, runoff from the site, and again, we do have uh, an ordinance required for hours of work. So I, I think we, it's not a one specific ordinance for everything you ask for, but there are different tools to monitor and regulate those items. And would you be able to tell us what the hours are? Seven, I believe it's uh, 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. Or is it, or if, and, I, and again, I apologize. This is one thing I'm not involved with. It's roughly 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. or 8 p.m. That's Monday through Saturday, uh, not on Sundays. And again, please don't hold me to that. But we do have those somewhat similar requirements. So uh, not specifically, uh, we don't anticipate at all using any of the school property or any of that kind of stuff. So um, I'm well aware of the noise ordinance and construction. I'm just finishing a project in Haverford called Atherton where we built um, 
large buildings next to each other. So people are occupying one building while we build the next building. So there's a, we don't utilize, we don't go to 8 p.m. <laughs> so just, uh, so uh, we're well, well aware of what we need to do as good neighbors. If you, uh, can you come up to the mic, please? Thanks. I don't want to just dominate this, so I brought somebody else. Has there been any consideration to making school lane one way? Um, in view of the fact that there's going to be many cars, 15 or 20 for, for a Mr. Pollock's um, project, and where I live, there are, um, Nine, not there are probably eighteen cars. If it's because there are two car garages there, so has anything been made? Any well, consideration been made for? Well, there, there will be because uh, this is a sketch plan. So we're, this is the first that the planning commission is hearing of it, and so they'll come back. They'll probably come back for a land development plan, and that would include traffic studies and looking at like looking at volume and looking at all that stuff. Oh, safe. okay. Thank you so sure. much. Ma'am, uh, so Trish Sherwin looked it up. It is 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Monday through Saturday. No work on Sunday. Hi, how are you? Thanks for having us. My name's Joe Dow. I uh, moved into Wayne at 302 Audubon maybe three weeks ago. My wife and daughter grew up in Radnor, went to Radnor Middle School in the old building, so it uh, looks a lot nicer now. <laughs> um, I guess just a few comments I wanted to add um, sort of for the developers to consider. Um, I, I would commend these projects proposing um, maintaining the public street parking and offsetting the new residential units with dedicated concealed underground parking. Um, I think that's incredible for a downtown transit-oriented center near a train station. Um, I would also say, you know, my wife and I made pretty uh, significant investment in Radnor and in Wayne, uh, given the, the housing market of late, and uh, it was a little bit of a, a risk, right, or a gamble. Um, the vacancy on Lancaster Avenue is definitely something that stands out as a concern, um, but something that we knew Radnor Township and Wayne, it wouldn't last forever and we were hoping and looking for projects like this to come to town to demonstrate a commitment and an investment in a new and, and refreshed sort of stretch of Wayne uh, that we could enjoy with our families um, and I would also say you know adding 20 parking spaces or whatever it may be with a single or one and a half new curb cuts on school lane uh, to me seems like a certainly fair trade-off um, in this context. And um, you know, ultimately, I think it's great to see this. It's great to see that there's a redevelopment component to the existing building. I hope that stays in the plan. Um, and I think Wayne could use a lot more projects like this that take advantage of the proximity to the train and um, some of the convenience that the town has. So thank you. Um, I have one question. How do, can you go through how you're measuring the height of this building? I, I, I don't have it in front of me, but I believe it needs to be 42 foot along the front Lancaster Avenue. I believe that's what the uh, requirement was per zoning. Not, not off school lane? In, in the WBOD, it's measured off of Lancaster Avenue, so it's the front of the building. So it's looked at from Lancaster Avenue, is the way the WBOD is organized. I will tell you from the front. Can you show, me, show me in the code where it says that, just so I understand. Yeah. So on the front of the building, I believe it's 42 foot, three stories. I will tell you on the back of the building, you'll see a fourth floor, a very similar to the condominiums. If you look at the condominiums, they have a garage door on the, on the first floor and then three stories above, and it'll look very similar to that. 
in terms of a four-story lock from School Lane. So under uh, 280.53.8E is building height. Um, it says no build, building shall exceed a height of 42 feet and three stories. WBOD also has special definitions. Let me get to those. Building height, uh, the vertical distance between the mean level of grade existing in front of a building or structure along the street right of way measured at the top edge of the flat roof. So it's the front of the building on Lancaster. Any more public comment? So there's a, a minimum height that we have to meet. Um, I'm just going back to the. It may have up to 40, uh, uh, four, four stories, so long as it does not exceed 42 feet. I believe it's for, the from Lancaster, it's 42. So the front of the building, as measured from Lancaster, is the mean grade along the front of the building. In many other districts, it's measured differently. It's just that WBOD has a special definition. Hi, I'm Sarah Whitehead. I live on Lantoga Road. Um, my question is about stormwater management with all this construction. Um, we currently have that major plan going on in the middle of Wayne. Can all of this proposed construction, will, it, will the new project still be able to withhold all the water that frequently fr floods downtown Wayne? So be, being a sketch plan, we don't even have the full, full survey yet. So we haven't analyzed the uh, stormwater um, and to add to that, the township just passed or is passing a new stormwater. Did that pass, Steve? Oh, Steve left. Um, was passing the new stormwater ordinance. So that'll all be evaluated during the land development. I, Rob, yes, that was. It, it goes into effect October the 12th. Is there uh, any more public comment? Uh, Nick, what are, you, what are your next steps for this? Well, the next steps, Rob will have to prepare a plan, um, whether it's a, a plan, a land development plan, or some sort of plan for zoning you know, is to be determined on it. But obviously, um, this is just to see comments from both the neighbors and the board. And uh, from there, we'll absorb those comments and come up with a plan. Hopefully, it would be acceptable. Right. So the next step, there will be other public hearings, as I mentioned, possibly zoning, possibly land development. So um, it'll be before in a public hearing setting as well. And you, you may be meeting with neighbors as well, Correct. I assume, right? Yes, yeah, so I was taking down names and uh, addresses right. as right. we go along. Thank you. Um, so I, I guess that's... Uh, uh, Actually, uh, does the staff have any comments on this what, from what they've heard? No, I don't have any comments, but uh, again, to, to follow up what Nick just said, <clears throat> they're in front of you tonight to get your comments. So if the board has any further comments, uh, you don't need to take any official action, but any comments, uh, they're here to, for you to provide them. Okay, hearing none, I'll, I'll say I good have, work. I comment. have one comment. I, I think it's a nice project. I, I agree. Uh, I agree with the last public comment, or second to last public comment, that this is great to see something like this in downtown Wayne where you can walk to the train from where you live. Uh, anyway, uh, thank you and good luck, gentlemen. Thank you. thank you very much for your time this evening.
Oh, folks, since some folks have come in, uh, we have one more, two more agenda items, but since some folks have come in late, uh, I just want to remind people that the uh, Eagle Road Land Development Project withdrew its application tonight, not the project, the, just tonight. Um, Chick-fil-A uh, also withdrew their uh, agenda item, and we're taking the historic preservation ordinance off tonight's meeting, and we're moving it to a special meeting. Uh, I think it's cleaner that way that we can address that at a special meeting of the Planning Commission soon. And uh, so anyone who has that interest can just come to that, that sole meeting. So uh, <clears throat> that's that. Uh, thank you. And then uh, we have our next uh, application is an appeal, Zoning Hearing Board uh, 150 to 168 Lancaster Avenue. And I, and I would just remind, um, on these Zoning Hearing Board appeals, I, I really prefer, the board actually prefers that you guys talk about the, your Zoning Hearing Board issue, not issues, not, I don't, we don't need a full-blown presentation of the plan. I mean, it just doesn't apply to us because all they're seeking is our advice on what, what we hear about the, the hardship. So, thanks. Uh, I'm sure the board's aware this is uh, the corner of uh, Luella and Lancaster Avenue. Um, it's a redevelopment of that corner. Uh, it is, the applicant uh, is basically two local people, Dan Berger and Corey Lonenberg, both who live in Rainer Township. Uh, Dan will give you a brief overview of um, Burger Rental and what they do. And then Matt Johnson from Burger Rental will actually go through the project. And he did hear that comment from Mr. Golis <laughs> regarding uh, trying to keep it to the issues uh, from the zoning. Yeah, because the reason is if you get, if you go through ZHB and you get approved from them, you'll come back before us. And that's when we get the full blown land development plans. So we don't have to do it tonight. Great, thank you. Uh, my name is Dan Berger. Thanks for your time tonight. Uh, we're here to obviously present on 150, 168 Lancaster Avenue um, on the mixed use development there. Um, I, as, as Nick said, I was born and raised in Radnor, live in Radnor now with my wife and two kids there. Kids, um, obviously, as, as everyone knows, there's an older site. Um, we think in, in need of redevelopment. Our goal is here to bring transit oriented housing, uh, additional housing into, into Wayne, um, improve the overall aesthetics and significantly improve the walkability, the walkway, the sidewalk on Luella, uh, improve safety, and we'll, we'll talk about that. Uh, Matt's gonna go in detail uh, regarding that. We did have our neighborhood meeting this past Thursday at the church next door. About 50 uh, residents of the area were in attendance, um, and we presented the, uh, the concept about for about an hour, hour and a half then, um, and uh, had a handful of questions that we are taking back in and we'll be uh, discussing. Um, so with that, uh, I'm gonna hand it over to Matt. Thanks. <laughs> so I'll run through it quickly and then also address the four areas we're looking for relief. That's fine. Um, we're, we're on the corner of Lancaster and Luella. Uh, this is the existing site. Uh, this is the existing building, three stories. Um, uh, retail on the first floor, apartments on the second floor, third story is uh, vacant. Uh, currently up here. Uh, we're proposing to put back a three-story building uh, plus a basement. The existing building also has a basement. Uh, retail on the first floor, two levels of apartments uh, going from existing nine apartments to a total of 24 uh, new apartments. Uh, I can kind of focus on the areas of relief that we're looking for. Um, so there are four um, variances uh, that we're essentially looking for. Uh, three of them are existing non-conforming that we would like to maintain. Uh, currently, technically, we have zero on-site uh, parking spaces. Uh, we are putting back 34 on-site parking spaces uh, in the basement uh, of our building uh, for our residences, much like the other project. Uh, we still won't conform with the zoning code as far as parking. Uh, we'll still be short. We'll, we'll meet the zoning code for uh, residential parking, uh, 
uh, but because we don't because we are providing parking on site and we don't have any on-site parking for the retail uh, we'll still be short uh, today the project is short about 48 spaces I think it's 47 or 48 spaces our proposed project is short uh, I think 35 spaces so even though we're building a slightly larger project than the existing uh, we think we're making the parking situation uh, better because of the additional parking that we're adding on site. Um, the second area of relief that we are requesting, uh, some of this needs a little context. So the existing building has about 10,000 square feet of retail. We're putting back about 10,000 square feet of retail. Uh, if you have over 8,000 square feet of retail, you're required to have two loading zones for that retail. Um, currently, all the retail is loaded uh, in the alley behind our building. Uh, we think that's enough area for at least one retail bay. I'm not sure that, I think area-wise, we could probably fit two retail loading bays there, um, but we're asking relief because uh, only one of them would be able to be used at a time, right? Um, if they're back-to-back -back or, or end-to-end, -end, essentially. The third area that we're looking for relief is I believe there's a requirement um, for a planting buffer between a commercial project and a residential uh, use. Uh, so currently we have a commercial project and the condos to the south at 102 Luella are residential use. There's no 10 foot planting buffer there now uh, in that alley. We're asking to maintain the existing condition uh, where there's no 10 foot planting buffer. So that's the third variance. Uh, and then the, the fourth one uh, is the building setback line along Luella. Uh, the building setback line is defined in the zoning code uh, from Lancaster Ave to School Lane uh, to be 45 feet from the center line of Luella. That is essentially uh, to the face of the existing building. Uh, we are proposing to build essentially to our property line uh, which would then only be, I think, 30 feet from the center line of Luella. It might be more, Rob. Mm -hmm. Rob, I'm not sure if you know that exact number. It's, it's 30 feet. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Would that effectively affect? Would that affect the parking in the front, though? Would that move that? parking further into Lancaster Avenue? So we, we're we proposing to eliminate that parking along Luella. Uh, on the screen now you can see a diagram of uh, what we're proposing where the uh, eight space, currently the sidewalk uh, comes up and it jogs over uh, in front of the retail and then there's steps that go up to Lancaster Ave. We're proposing to remove these eight parking spaces uh, which allows us to straighten out the sidewalk um, provide uh, planning strips on both sides, like provide the verge. Um, it also allows us to essentially grade the sidewalk so that steps are no longer needed um, and just make the pedestrian traffic and, and easier. Uh, but when you, it, when you bump out the building, is it going to push the Lancaster Avenue parking, that, you know, the angled parking? That, that's going to be pushed back into Lancaster. So that's... By what I'm looking at, right? It, that is an aspect of our project. That's not something that we feel requires relief. Um, the, we're asking for setback relief along Luella, at, along Lancaster. Uh, we propose our building to go to uh, the current building setback line or the current uh, build to line. I forget how it's defined, uh, but we're not asking for relief in that area. Uh, we are proposing to push our building out to that, uh, I'll call it the setback line, uh, which would then also push the parking out to be in line with the rest of the parking along Lancaster Ave. Yeah, I'm just saying that, you know, as somebody who uses that road a lot, I, I'm used to having more space when you get past the, the main buildings on Lancaster and then you get to your section and there's m more room to, where people are backing out and stuff. So it's like, that's, sort, that's a learned thing that people around here, have a bit, they've grown accustomed to, so changing that might, might be more significant than you think. Under, understood. Um, and that's not, and you're not seeking relief on that? N no, we're, we're, look, we would, we plan on conforming with the zoning code as uh, the set, uh, the existing setback on Lancaster Ave. So Steve, that's, they're in, they're okay there? 
Mr. Chairman, that brings, I had a couple questions for the applicant. Uh, I'll wait on parking. I can wait till after the board, the commission goes or whenever you wish. Okay. Just a quick clarification. Uh, as a result of uh, the reconfiguration of the site here, uh, how many public spaces are you losing here? We're losing eight spaces on Luella. Okay, um, got it. So currently we have nine apartments and we have zero on-site parking. Uh, we're proposing to build 24 apartments and have 34 on-site parking spaces. So we think we're net positive parking, okay. right? I'll get there. Okay, thank you. <laughs> In the earlier application, there was talk about overflow parking. Do you have overflow parking built into your residential computation? We don't. I wasn't aware. Is that part of the, sorry, was that part of the zoning code or is that part of an, another? It's the land development code. Uh, no, we meet the zoning code minimum. We don't have that additional space per four units uh, factored in yet. Yeah, but you can. So you're taking away eight public spaces and you're not going to provide, you need to provide the overflow no matter what, I think. We'll look into it. How, of the 24 units, what's, what's the breakdown? Uh, eight twos, 16 ones. Uh, the ones are primarily under 800 square feet uh, per the zoning code and parking requirements. And the twos would be closer to 1,200 square feet. I think there is a one plus a den, which is over 900 square feet, which uh, bumps our required parking count up a little bit. And you're going to have how many spaces below? below? 30, 34. With respect to the retail, is it retail that we're contemplating here, or is there restaurant use, uh, anything like that? So we're, we're not necessarily that far along, but uh, retail, whether it be uh, shops or a restaurant. So we can assume 280-53.12, uh, which is retail use for the purposes of our... I believe so, yes. Okay, got it. Thank you. How does the underground parking get accessed in your plan? From what, I mean, from School Lane or from Luella? Currently proposing to access the parking uh, off the alley to the rear of our building. Uh, so off That's of Luella. Cool. That, the alley is really narrow. Uh, we would ensure that we have adequate width for a two-lane drive. So have you given further thought, like, where the additional parking is going to come from? So if you have 16 units, let's say that not ever, you know, there's going to be more than one car per unit. So let's just assume that it's... 1.5 and then you have the eight I'm sorry you have the eight two bedroom units that's what theoretically what 16 cars right so it's 40 cars so where's the additional word where, where do you from a, just from a practical standpoint have you thought about where those additional folks would park their cars as well as if you're taking away those eight units of the par public spots on Luella so, um, so we intend to meet the zoning code uh, as far as the parking count for the apartments. Um, from a functional perspective, uh, in, in my experience, uh, if a building is a 50-50 mix of uh, ones and twos, uh, the actual number of cars and, and that an actual number of parking spaces needed is closer to 1.4 uh, per unit. Um, so. I feel that we have adequate parking, and we're not a 50-50 mix. We're we're under that, so we have under we have less than 50% two bedrooms. Um, so I feel that the the parking is adequate, and um, it it does meet the zoning code, but not the land development code, which I just wasn't aware of before today. So, all right, on the Luella side, are you planning? How are you making the building larger, and would you be encroaching in those spots? Well, I, I saw the the trees and the planning. But um, is that with the existing building line or is that with a new encroaching building line towards? Uh, it's a new building line that's not Luella, closer to Luella. Yeah. So, uh, how, many there, feet, how many feet further over is the new building line from the existing structure? I want to say 15. I'm, I'm not sure. I, I, there has been obviously a lot of conversation about the parking spaces along Luella. We are 
talking to the church, and then the church has a, a lot of that, I think, is, is coming from the church, right, because it's uh, those uh, parishioners that are using those spaces uh, most often. Uh, we are talking, sorry? Uh, correct, and, and Wednesdays occasionally. Okay. <laughs> um, the parking spaces right now are on our property, I believe. I guess. I don't know my next question, Mike. My next question was: Is there a right of way? What What is the status of those eight parking spots? Yeah, there. Uh, right now, I believe does the township rent those spots from the applicant, Steve? Do you know or? I, I don't know. That was actually Mr. Cornelio was going to be one of my questions. Okay. If that. If there is something on the deed, the property deed, uh, that is a concern. And I, you know, so I'm going to ask you a couple questions since you opened the door um, regarding that parking. So that's one question, right? Um, yeah, my understand. I, I don't recall if there's any sort of agreement on that. I don't know if Dan, yes. you know, from, go ahead. From my understanding, there was historically a contract uh, that uh, we are still looking for. Um, contract that's been in place for a number of years um, that uh, we're, we're still identifying um, if that's in place or what that you know where the eight those those spots are um, on on the property on our property that were by contract right rented to so the that, that's the big question that's that's the understanding right? because people say how are they they being you taking public spaces right so I'm, I, I just want to make sure everybody understands um, while we're on that topic, and I know the gentleman said you are working with the church, uh, and I believe this was brought to you, Mr. Cornelia, is, is there a possibility or uh, to consider leaving parallel parking there, right? So if a normal spot is 20 foot in length, 20 by 10, that gets flipped, so now it's 10 feet needed. Yeah, we're looking in both alternatives as far as providing parking for the church in some other manner, as well as perhaps uh, having some parallel parking sp spots uh, in that area as well. So we're looking at both of them right now. Thank you. Because that, that was raised the other evening, I guess Thursday night, um, last Thursday. Um, Mike, just one thing, you, you, you know, and I think everyone knows that those spots, I, I, I refuse to park in them just because it's impossible unless to back out because you're, you know, you may drift down into it, but um, they're not ideal spots. You know, I, I know they, they're used by the church, and I'm sure some people use them, probably in the audience back here. But, of course, I generally I think you try to avoid them. But I'll agree with that, except when there's no other spot. Right, when there's <laughs> I agree. Are you, with, your, with your plan retail, are you providing any dedicated uh, spots for their, uh, either the employees of uh, the retail? No. Okay. It's, I think there's a possibility of some consideration if there's a, a shared parking analysis done and, and it's possible that some retailers could park in the garage when the residence is away, that type of thing. But okay. uh, I don't think we'll get there really. So. Okay. I, I just think uh, from, just from a practical standpoint, I, I just think it's, parking is going to be tough. Yeah. I just, so just just a question, as far as accessing the resident parking, is it behind the building? That's correct. And is that where the loading bay is as well? That's correct. So if someone is, if, if you're... Oh, sorry, so the loading is uh, sort of beyond the entrance, right? Um, so the, the loading would occur deeper into the site uh, than the access into the parking. I guess what I'm saying is, if, if there's loading going on, is that preventing people from getting in and out of the parking? No. Did they show in the plan down where the loading would be and where the entrance to the parking would be? Or it's not? So the loading would occur deeper into the site uh, in, in, in this area, uh, and, and we would be accessing the parking uh, closer to Luella. And just to be clear, one of the items of relief he was seeking from zoning is to change the setback on the wall from the existing 45 feet to about 30 feet. That's correct. Which is those eight parking spaces. 
Yeah, as Nick pointed out, those eight parking spaces currently uh, pitched down uh, into you our own building. Them, but I mean, the setback is still an item of relief that you need. And right now, the building is on the setback line, it seems like, or nearly. And you propose to come th 15 feet in. That's correct. Okay. Can you, can you show me on this diagram where the loading is? The loading is currently back in this area. Um, and it, sorry, Luella, is that school lane? That school lane that you're drawing across? No, it's the alley between uh, 102 Luella and our building. Okay. Uh, it's it's where the so the again currently our project or the existing property has about 10,000 square feet of retail. That's what we're proposing to also put back. Currently, the existing retail is loaded through that alley, or it would be the only sort of designated loading area. It's where the trash pickup occurs. Um, so that's what we're proposing to maintain is the loading uh, in, in that alley space. Matt, could you show um, where the, uh, our proposed building setback line would be in relation to the building behind? So as, it, as it's been stated, the current, or the building setback line per the code is essentially the edge of our building here. Um, we're proposing to build out uh, to our property line, um, which is actually pretty much in line uh, with 102 Luella, the condo building to the south. So with, the, with this lane in the back of the building, does that allow for you know, fire emergency? Yes. Um, what is the width? What's, what's the width? We'll have 24 feet. Matt, can you take me to the front of the, the Lancaster Avenue side of what your new building will, how far out it'll come from the present conditions? Yeah, like, yeah, okay. So those sparking, parking spaces are now going to be a building part of the building. On, sorry, this is Lancaster yep. out here. This is the, Luella. So, uh, so where is the present building? Where does that start now? The, the front. Sure. <laughs> it's, uh, the, the front of the building is basically the curb line. So right now there's the curb line where the par parking spaces start, and that would be where the building extends to. Um, and that's a build two line. Right, and so that's the code requirement actually requires us to move the building out to that line to be able to be built there. Otherwise, like if we build it back further, you actually need relief. But your existing conditions are it's back further. The existing condition is back further. Because correct. what I'm worried, what, what I think is like when I go by there sometimes and people are heading, it's the cross light is fairly long, um, I think because of the uses on the other side of the street, but you know, that's gonna really jam that tight corner. And think about like kids coming out of the middle school and shoppers. So, and so we, we did actually think about that. Um, so if you, we, we were actually trying to realign the crosswalk. So if you look at the upper right, um, oh, yeah. So we're actually trying to realign the crosswalks to make the, the crossing shorter. Um, right now you have a very long kind of angled crosswalk and knowing the pedestrian traffic there from the school, creating you know a nice sidewalk coming up Luella that you're not going in front of the cars and up the steps and then across and a diagonal across the traffic light. It was really trying to organize that into a more traditional intersection where you were crossing uh, in the direction that you should. Okay. You know, in the midst of all of our discussions right here about what's going to happen, what could happen, what might not happen, staff, have you had some input with the developer at all about losing the parking spaces on Luella, possibly supporting relief to not build to the setback line because of the proximity, of the intersection, things like that. Has that come up? Uh, so, Mr. Kunda, we did, as we do with 
virtually every developer that comes into the township, we usually meet with staff to, to take a look at things. Uh, they explain their projects to us. We give them some input, but obviously staff does not support or not support something, right? All we can live by is the ordinance. We'll point out uh, areas where we feel they're gonna have, uh, they're gonna need waivers for saldo or, or uh, zoning and take it from there. So from a staff standpoint, we don't ever tell a developer, yes, we support this project because in the end, it's a recommendation by the Planning Commission and a vote uh, by the Board of Commissioners. So <clears throat> all the topics that have been discussed tonight have been discussed with the developer. Parking on Luella, um, to get outside the Zoning Hearing Board app, uh, the parking on Lancaster being pushed out, what their engineer noted about the sidewalk uh, in its current configuration and slope versus a straight sidewalk, removing the stairs, removing that slope. So these, those have all been discussed. We are aware of it. And if they go to Zoning Hearing Board, whatever the, the recommendation or lack thereof from this commission, should they come back in for land development, that's when we start to look at everything um, through the lens of land of uh, the saldo, stormwater management, grading permit. Um, I just want to hop a little bit on what Skip was talking about. Um, just having lived in this township for 38 years, my impression is it's sort of nice to see a development like this. It's also like almost like a scary to think about the mass of this building, the number of cars, the traffic coming out on the small street, the, the, the change of the template of parking spaces in the front of the building. It's almost like on one, one side of me says this is a great thing for Wayne, and the other side of me says this is a, a very awkward spot for this, this mass of cars, mass of parking. I mean, the applicant before us was—I mean, the applicant before us was talking about concerns over, you know, ingress, egress, looking at uh, school lane. Um, Luella's Luella is a tight street. So you're not going to change that. Um, so anyway, that's that's what I—I'm I'm sort of feeling that, and I don't know how to—I don't know how to package that into a recommendation, or not. So that's my that's my turmoil right now. So, Mr. Chairman, um, the WBOD uh, does contemplate development of this variety, right? Mixed use, retail on the bottom, apartments at the top. Uh, there is a concern here um, because, yes, there's an existing nonconformity, and I think by your testimony tonight, you're short 48 spaces as existing, right? Roughly, yes. Okay. Uh, by my calculation, uh, if you add back what you're removing in terms of public parking, um, you're still going to be 47 spaces short when we consider 10,000 square foot of retail, 300 square feet per, um, uh, per spot for retail, um, as well as the six overflow spots. Um, so uh, I, I think the concern here is that we, we want, as part of WBOD, a thriving retail area, but there's no, there's even less parking for the retail portion of your development as well. So that's another overlay on top of Mr. Chairman's concerns here. And you know that lane, the, the alley you're talking about, uh, one other thought I, occurred to me just now is that, have you thought about accessing the under, building parking uh, from Luella instead of the alley. So we hadn't looked at it previously. That was something that was brought up at our uh, neighbor meeting last week, and we were going to look into it. Um, we had our meeting on Thursday. We're here tonight. Uh, so I haven't had a chance to really study it, but no, we haven't yet. We'll take some, uh, if there's no other staff or um, board uh, comment, I'll take public comment. I've got, I've got a quick question. This drive into your site at the rear of your building, 
to get into the parking? How is that 24 feet? Maybe I, Rob, maybe Rob will go for that. The, the distance between um, the condo building at the corner and the back of the building is 24 feet. It's a, there's a cross easement. I generally think we'll have to make it wider. If, if we are able to access it from the alley, I think we'll have to make it wider. So we'll have to shorten uh, that front part of the building in order to make that front piece of the alley wider to make that ingress and egress easier. So, as drawn, it might be difficult to work with, but I think we could figure it out. I like the project, but I think you're, I mean, you're pushing, I, actually, I don't mind going to Luella, the street, because I think it just helps clean up that whole intersection. I agree that parking area is not nice, but it is parking. And crunch, you know, s taking out the buffer zone and, and then keeping that area behind so small. I mean, you're, you're pushing your, um, you're pushing your building as far as you can on both sides. And, and I understand, I, I think it's a great project. I think it's nice for the, uh, for Radnor, but uh, you're exacerbating your parking requirements every time you push the building farther out. So I, I mean, if you had a little more space behind, you could maybe cut out a few units and I think get a better development out of it. We're, we're very early, I think. I mean, yeah. I, I think cleaning up Luella would be really nice. I think the corner is so awkward and so difficult for pedestrians at that corner. Yeah. I just want to echo, I, I agree that cleaning that up and normalizing it, because I find the existing thing more trouble than pushing those spaces out, because that lack of uniformity creates the issue. If it's all uniform, it's not as big an issue. That's my experience, because I've got plenty of experience with that intersection and two former middle schoolers. How do, do I turn this on? No, I don't have to turn this on. I live in the condos on the corner that are going to be surrounded by... Identify Please yourself. identify yourself. I'm sorry? Identify your, yourself. Your name? Oh, uh, Susie Wolverton. I live at 102 Luella. And I see the school lane with, what, 35 new... Residences at the gap, over the gap, or 24, or however many, and the uh, alley with another, what, 35 people, and us uh, right there in the beginning of Luella with uh, 18 cars coming out there, all going down these two narrow places. Um, I don't see how we get all the people from the apartments on the two locations uh, feeding the same little part of Luella Avenue with the school buses and the parents lined up on that avenue to pick their kids up. And I just don't see how anybody, it sounds like gridlock. Also, in our building, we have our fire prevention door on uh, that alley. You're welcome. Uh, Cheryl Tamola, Midland Avenue. Um, I walked around there. I don't know whether all of you have walked there. Oh, I don't know whether all of you have walked there, but I highly recommend it. This, um, as things appear on paper, is one thing, but to actually walk back there, the area behind the building is very small. I mean, 
I know that there's a certain measurement that it has, but it's a very, very tight spot. I can't, I, I walked there the other day, I tried to imagine people coming and turning through there to get into the parking lot. I can't imagine it. Um, I also think that the idea, I mean, I like the idea of putting more trees there always, but um, I think that the whole building is a little too ambitious and it occludes your view of into South Wayne, which we spoke to them about the other evening, of stepping back the building in some way so it isn't this monolithic block on the corner. Is that a monolith? I don't know. But it, it's like too much mass, too much bulk. And uh, it will kind of stifle the sense of community that you kind of have walking there. And I don't know whether these folks are there when it's school time or not, but it's a real safety concern because those kids sprawl all over the place. And that would be a concern to me to have no extra kind of space for them. You know, now they, they walk by the, they don't mind going up and down the steps. They don't mind crossing, you know, crossing the street in an odd way. They've done it their lives. And I think that there's some, I mean, I like the idea of straightening out. The intersection drives me crazy because people don't really stop at the light going across, uh, going west on Lancaster Avenue. But I don't think that making something so big that it is so bulky will help the situation in Wayne, really. So I, I really, really encourage all of you to walk back there and see what it's like because we used to always do that on the Planning Commission. I liked it. So I'm just saying, thanks. Thanks again for the time. Um, I guess, Mr. Commissioner, while you were saying you were split on the benefits to Wayne and the, the sacrifice of parking and things, I feel similarly, although maybe not as even of a split, I definitely appreciate again the investment in Wayne in this project. Um, you know, I think a few things just to, around the intersection and the parking. Um, today, there's likely 80 to 100 feet of cutout curb essentially through the eight parking spaces on Luella. Uh, and this project would push the ingress and egress back off of that intersection to the far sort of bottom right corner of the property, actually giving a bit more runway from the intersection where you can predict where cars would come in and out instead of trying to guess at eight parking spaces that are sunken below the street. I guess I would also say um, in the way that the sidewalk performs today, uh, we heard at the community meeting a lot of users actually bypass the sidewalk and walk straight from the sidewalk at, in front of 102 Luella to the intersection behind the eight parking spaces, which for students and others seems like a more problematic sort of behavior, um, walking behind eight cars. Um, and I, I would also, uh, I guess, around parking and protecting the eight parking spaces sort of implore the commission um, and the zoning hearing board eventually to sort of weigh the protection of suboptimal parking spaces in town that exist today merely as a matter of legacy. Um, in lieu of sort of looking for better parking elsewhere. I mean, if we can contract with these owners at some date in the past to rent eight parking spaces, maybe we can find eight better parking spaces on better ground uh, somewhere else. Um, you know, also I would say when, when we look at this, the condos at, at 102 Luella actually have longer frontage on School Lane than this building has on Lancaster Avenue or on Luella itself. And I wasn't part of those conversations, but nine two-car garages line school lane directly in proximity to the middle school, offering ingress and egress at each of those entrances for 18 cars approximately. So uh, I don't know that it's sort of appropriate in my opinion to um, judge this corner property on prime portion of downtown Wayne uh, by different standards than uh, greater frontage on school lane facing the middle school. Um, you know, without having the sort of habit of using that corner and being used to the setback parking spaces in front of the building, I think as a visitor to Wayne, 
90 degree crosswalks and straight sidewalks without steps with ADA accessible conditions um, seem like a better use of property in, in town. So I do agree with some of the comments about the scale and the mass and the corner of a three story block as you enter Wayne um, sort of being somewhat daunting and maybe there's a way through setbacks to soften that corner and it may mean the sacrifice of a unit or two but maybe that offsets parking requirements and uh, allows for garage parking to be shared with the community uh, in some manner. So just a few comments to add, thank you. Hi, my name is Stacy Morgan and I live in Wayne. Um, I came here for something else, I thought, but I'm sitting here uh, looking at this and I've lived here about 20 years. And the one thing I see and um, has been talked about is this alleyway. And when you think about a loading dock, whether it's one or two, Where's the truck? He's got a back in, he's gonna block, he's got a back in to unload, to go to retail, and it's gonna create gridlock. And I moved here to be in suburban Wayne, not New York City. And that's, you always have gridlock in New York City. As I mentioned earlier, my name is Jose Garcia. I live at 102 Luella. Our only concern now at, at the board of the building is the use of the alley because we, of course, have the truck and uh, the uh, trash and uh, recycle remover twice a week, both of them. Um, they're, we're talking about putting loading docks and entrances to the garage on that alley. And um, besides that, we have another concern Somehow, when our builder built the building, he made a deal with the owners of that property that we would maintain the alley. And of course, that would be a totally different kettle of fish now. You're gonna have 34 cars come in and out, plus trucks for an increased space in, in trash removal and all the other uses that are gonna be given to the alley. So that's the only uh, concern we have right now with that. Thank you. I guess my last comment, I promise. Uh, I guess the term alley uh, sort of sticks because I think Wayne deserves better than kind of an alley that we uh, maybe <laughs> debate over to some extent. Uh, coming from the city the last few years, I've seen developments along Washington Avenue where they actually turn these into more of a walk. They may pave the street with brick pavers of some sort and put some trees on that back side to make it more appealing with street lighting. Um, that can serve as kind of a dual purpose. And I guess I just wanted to sort of flag that here for consideration that maybe we can get something better than an alley that actually looks a little more appealing and has some um, curb appeal as well as function. And that may mean cutting the back of the building in a little bit and making it wider, but uh, it would feel like a nice addition to, uh, to this property. Does that, uh, Rob, does that alleyway serve that the other residential building? I, I believe the it's one on The one on School Lane? Yeah, so the 102 Luella building um, has basically half of the alley, and the subject property has the other half of the alley. But I think. Do they have, like, exits or? I, I think there's a fire door coming out that, that side. So if you had to put in the buffer zone, where you would have to put it on, on your property, right? Yes. And also, um, that there's no elevator at this loading dock. I mean, you have an elevator going down to the garage, but wouldn't you? I mean, if if you're a resident moving in, how how are you gonna? You're not gonna use the loading dock, huh? 
Anyway, how would you do that? I mean, we, we see residents moving in, simply parking in the alley and then uh, essentially hand trucking their things to the elevator um, in the garage. Jose, to answer or to respond to your comment, I think if, if we were to move forward with development, we would prefer to maintain the alley. Uh, we would want to be responsible for that. So that's something we could certainly discuss. And I would imagine that the residents of Luella right now go out the fire door to take their trash and recycling and they walk up the alley, right? Or, or do you do it a different way? How does your, how do you take your trash out? No, we have a trash man. Uh, all the buildings. Here's what I found. Okay, thank you. So, yes, please come up. I'm at 102 Luella, and I just wanted to mention the fact that our trash in, in 102 Luella is within our building. However, the, the buildings that are on the other side of the, of the little uh, alley, their trash is in the alley itself. So. Um, I don't know what, what the, where the trash would be for those buildings there, but, uh, uh, or how they would be accessed. So that would be an important thing because, frankly, trash in that little alley is unsightly and uh, dangerous. So there you have it. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. So Matt, would, are, would you guys, are you amenable to any uh, changes in terms of scale and mass and number of apartments and all that stuff, or are you set on this, on these numbers? Um, no, we are amenable to making adjustments. I mean, uh, given what we heard last Thursday, given what we heard today, I, I do think we need to look at, uh, take a closer look at how we're accessing the garage, right? Um, the, the public parking, um, again, we drew this up. We thought we were net positive in parking, right? And we thought it was a good thing, uh, but the, we understand the loss of public parking. Um, so that's something we're going to have to take a closer look at. Um, so I, I think before we move forward, we're going to wind up uh, making adjustments to this plan. But again, like uh, we're very early. We, we welcome the feedback. Uh, so. Well, I mean, it's just not feedback. I mean, we have to make a decision tonight on either endorsing what you guys are doing, not endorsing what you guys are doing, or, or being neutral. So the Z Zoning Hearing Board wants to know how we feel on one of those three ways. So if you guys are amenable to changing something that might make Steve and I feel better about the massing of this thing, because I think it's a nice project, but it's really big, and it's, and, you know, there is something to be said for seeing the church steeples and seeing the... The, the school and see, you know, it's something about Wayne where sometimes view sheds do matter here, even though, you know, urban, urbanizing and transit oriented design are important. Um, so I guess that's my question for you guys. It's like, if we decide to be neutral, that's not helping you immensely at ZHB. And I don't know where we are because we haven't taken a vote, but if, if you guys are amenable to coming back to us, I think that makes some sense. Matt, yeah, we, we discussed that just now as we we're walking up here is pretty um, easily. Everyone agreed that we would continue the zoning hearing and come back to this board with some revised plans. So you would you were going to go to zoning hearing anyway? No, no, we're going to continue. Oh, I missed. I missed. I missed. Oh, I'm different. sorry. We're going to continue the zoning hearing. Okay. Continue thank from you, thank you, thank you. this month to following month and then hopefully we back to you um would that be um november and yeah. we would we would schedule for november and i would have to go ahead 
Oh, no. I'm sorry. Well, if you're going to take the time to take a look at the plans again, do you think maybe you can dig up that parking contract so we can see if there's actually a restriction on those spaces that, that can or cannot be broken? Yeah, there, I know it's not recorded, Mary, um, because we've, we've gotten a title report. Um, we'll try to find it. I don't know if we know where it is. I don't know if the township has it. Um, I, I think everybody's looking. Yeah, so Steve. I, I think that's important to find. Do you know if the township is making any payments? Any idea? I, I don't know, Nick. We'll, we'll talk with the parking authority. Okay. All right. They, they, if anybody would know, they that would be them. Because I know there are other areas in the township where the township does rent parking spaces and makes payment to the to the uh, landowner. No, so our, our move now is uh, I need a motion to table this. So moved. Second. Second. Aye. Thank you for all your time yeah, and comments. Yeah, thank, no, thanks for, thanks for the presentation. Thank you. Thank you. So we have one last item on our agenda, I believe, tonight, and that's I'm leaving the board as the chair. Um, I, I ran into a full-time job. Or it ran into me, and I and I have I ha I couldn't say no. So uh, my capacity to be the chair uh, is is re greatly reduced, but my capacity to be on the board and do what I used to do before I was a chair uh, will continue, as long as you all you guys will have me. Um, and so I I need to know I need someone to uh, I need someone to nominate a nominate a new chair. I have someone in mind, but I need all you guys to think about, do you have any one you'd like to nominate as the, re the chair, the new chair? <laughs> in that case, uh, I, I'd like to nominate MJ Fruman. Uh, and the reasons for that are, um, since he's come on in April, He's, uh, you know, he watched every Radnor PC and zoning hearing board meeting on f Facebook or on YouTube for the last year be as before he came on. So I think that alone said something about his dedication. Um, also, he, you know, he, he's passionate um, and uh, he understands the, the idea that sometimes you have to, there's a certain neutrality that comes with the planning commission chair role that doesn't necessarily come with other roles. Um, so I just think uh, he'd be a great fit. And so I nominate MJ Fruman, and I need a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Great. Congratulations. So first of all, I'd like to say thank you for the nomination and thank you for your vote. But more importantly, Matt, um, I'd like to thank you for your service as uh, chair of the Planning Commission and your many years of service as a member of the commission. And um, uh, I know I don't want to speak for the rest of the commissioners, but we're delighted that you'll see you've agreed to stay on as a member and we look forward to your contribution. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you all very much. And thank you, audience, for coming out. We, uh, so anyway, uh, I think we can adjourn this meeting. But if you have a I have one thing for the new chair to, I hope, jump on as a, a champion. Uh, for the last three years, it seems like, uh, when I was off one year, uh, we have no longer been able to get paper copies of the plan. I can appreciate the fact that you don't want to send me a, a paper copy of the deed like we saw today that was signed in counterpart. It went on for 20 pages on one of the projects. Oh, we don't need that. But the three and a half by four feet paper copies of the plans are something that I used to get and we re could really use again. And there's enough trees out there to support that. And I, what I would say is that like, uh, I know Design Review gets packets in the mail because they, they come to my house. So it, it's, I think if it was just even a, a, a reduced, I don't think we need every sheet, but it sure would help sometimes to see the schematics um, because looking at them on my computer is sometimes frustrating. And I think if some boards are getting, still getting the paper, I mean, Planning Commission should probably 
um, get at least some paper. So if, I, if, if that's a, the will of the whole planning commission, we can make that happen. We just have to tell the applicant. I will tell you, I, I'm not comfortable paring down the sets because somebody's going to want to look at something on a different page. So uh, we can make the applicant, we can require the applicant give us copies for you. Are we talking about 11 by 17? Well, I guess that would be better than using my laptop, but uh, uh, maybe a, a middle size in between. Is there one more up? Uh, we we can, uh, 24 by 36 would be the next size. You know, I kind of like the 24 by 36. I don't want to speak for everyone, but I like that. And I, I have a few left over from over the years, and I haven't quite thrown them out, but uh, they're much easier to see fine detail. Skip, we can take that offline with staff. But yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk, and if not everybody wants them, we'll work something out. We'll make sure the Planning Commission gets what they need. Okay, folks, we're adjourned. Thank you.